Hi, I'm Tia. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you a cozy mystery book haul. So if you have been following my channel for a while, you will know that I had a goal at the beginning of this year to only buy five books every month. And that has obviously gone out the window with these stay at home orders. I have bought way more books than I ever should have bought, but apparently I'm a stress book buyer. So that's that. If you have not been following me before, then yay, it's a book haul. <laughs> past couple of months, I'm not sure, it might have been like the beginning of March, I got obsessed with watching people talk about cozy mysteries. And I will link some of those channels down below, but like um, Cortagonist, she has amazing recommendations. Literature Reads, I love watching her channel as well. Um, Intentionally Bookish, she talks a lot about cozy mysteries. Um, who else? I know Rainy Day Reads reads some cozy mysteries and Tara at Buzzwords Books. And I just, I've been watching those channels that recommend cozy mysteries, like their backlog of videos, um, because they've just been soothing to me. You know that their channel is just going to have cozy comfort reads and yeah, I don't know. I binge watched like all of Cortagonist's videos since we've been um, on stay at home orders and I watched a whole bunch of literature reads. Basically, I just looked up like cozy mystery book recommendations and cozy mystery book haul and I binge watched all of the videos that I could find and that led me to buying a whole bunch of cozy mysteries. Now, I don't know a ton about these books. Um, I do know some about them or I wouldn't have bought them, but if I tell you the synopsis of every single one, then we will be here forever. So basically I have divided these up into different tropes, I guess you would say, or what their focus is because Cozy Mysteries a lot of times will either focus like they'll have like a book theme or a food theme or a renovation theme, that type of stuff. So I have divided these up into those different themes and I'm just going to show you them by group and hopefully I will leave links to all of these down in the description box so you can click on those to go and check out more information on them if you were looking for something cozy to read during this time of uncertainty. I think that these will be great reads for this. I think I'm going to start with the like paranormal subcategory, I guess you would say, of cozy mysteries. Um, a lot of cozy mysteries have like witches in them as their main characters. And the first one is Witches When It All Began by Adele Abbott. This is a witch PI mystery, the first one in the series. And I think this is a pretty long running mystery series that I think has pretty good reviews. So, and it's pretty short. I think all of these books are actually pretty short. This doesn't even have page numbers in that. Oh, that's weird. I may have to number that myself. Then I have A Potion to Die For by Heather Blake. This is the first in the Magic Potion Mystery series. Secondhand Spirits by Juliet Blackwell. This is the first in the Witchcraft Mystery series. Caught Dead Handed by Carol J. Perry. This is the first in the Witch City mystery series. Night of the Living Deed by E.J. Copperman. This one is not witches. I believe this one is about ghosts and it's the first in the Haunted Guest House mystery series. It Takes a Witch by Heather Blake. This is the first in the Wishcraft mystery series. This may be the one that has, has wrapped up already that I could binge read. I'm actually looking for a series that is already done completely written that I can binge read. I love binge reading series and I haven't been doing it as much as I used to. Um, Spellbooked by Joyce and Jim Levine. This is a retired witches mystery. It's the first in their series. I think this one follows like a group of three witches who are trying to retire and find some replacements. And these are sort of just like about manners or renovation. I'm not sure but this is a manor house mystery and it's um, Grace Under Pressure. It's by Julie Heisey. And 
And then another one that's sort of about houses, I guess, is um, this is a fixer upper mystery and it's a high end finish by Kate Carlisle. And I, it says that this one has been turned into a show on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. So that could be fun to watch too. I have ones that focus on like sewing or clothing. Um, I don't have any that are like on knitting or crochet, but I think those would be fun too. But this is so deadly. Um, this is the first in the Southern Sewing Club mystery series, and it's by Elizabeth Lynn Casey. Then I have Pleading for Mercy by Melissa Bourbon. This is the first in the Magical Dressmaking Mystery. Then I have Cloche and Dagger, a hat shop mystery by Jen McKinley. This one is the first in the series, and a lot of the ones in the series have like super cute titles. That one's a good, sounds like a fun one. Now I'm gonna go to the ones that I have that are about plants or gardening, that type of thing. The first one I have is Marigolds and Murder by London Lovett. This is the first in her Port Danby mystery series, and this one is about a girl who is a, who owns a florist shop and I've heard such great things about this one from um, Courtney at Cortegeness as well as um, Rainy from Rainy Day Reads. She really likes this series and it's been on my like wish list forever and I'm so glad I finally have it. One Bad Apple by Sheila Connolly. This is the first in the Orchard Mystery series. Buried Secrets by Peg Cochran. This is the first in the Cranberry Cove Mystery series. Natural Thorn Killer by Kate Dyer Seeley. This is the first in the Rose City Mystery. I think this is just a duology, so that will be fun to binge read. Then the last one in this group is Pruning the Dead by Julia Henry. This one I think is like a gardening mystery. Now I'm going to move on to food themed ones, and I think this might be the most popular. This and books I think are, is the most popular like category, but Scone Cold Killer by Lena Gregory. Eggs in Purgatory by Laura Childs. This is a Cackleberry Club mystery, and this one really appealed to me because it is about some women who are over 40 um, who I think are opening up this like cafe together, and I really am interested in like stories that focus not just young people all the time that have some older characters, so I'm really looking forward to this one. Needed to Death by Winnie Archer. This is a bread shop mystery. I really want to read about a bread shop. Death of a Kitchen Diva by Lee Hollis, the first in the Haley Powell food and cocktails mystery. Sprinkle with Murder by Jen McKinley, the, a cupcake bakery mystery. Brownies and Broomsticks by Bailey Cates. This is the first in the Magical Bakery Mystery. So this one is a mixture of um, cooking and magic. This one I actually started during the Wine and Cheese Social that Rainy hosted. This is Pies and Prejudice by Ellery Adams. And this one is a mixture of baking and magic as well. And I really enjoyed the I think I read like three or four chapters and they were so good. I was like hooked right from the beginning. I love books that are about food and this one has like recipes in the back of it too. So I'm really looking forward to finishing this one. The Long Quiche Goodbye by Avery Ames. This is the first in the cheese shop mystery and I love cheese shops and I love cheese so much. I cannot wait to read this one. Death is Like a Box of Chocolates. This is a chocolate covered mystery, the first in the series by Kathy Ahrens. A Spoonful of Murder by Connie Archer. This is the first in the Soup Lovers mystery. It follows a girl who takes over her parents' soup, soup shop. I think that'll be fun too. I really like a variety of soups. And this one I think has recipes in the back as well. A Sheet Cake Named Desire by Jacqueline Brady. This is a piece of cake mystery. And it also has recipes. I guess all the baking ones have recipes, which is super fun. This is the first in the Bake Shop Mystery series by Ellie Alexander, and it's Meet Your Baker. Um, this one is one of Courtney's favorite series. She talks about this one a lot on her channel, so I have high expectations for this one. I'm expecting this to be a really good one. The last of the food-related ones is The Diva Runs Out of Time by Krista Davis. This is the first in the Domestic Diva Mystery Series. The next category is the ones that are set around books, like bookshops or um, libraries, that type of things. And this one is 
a Blue Ridge Library mystery, the first in that series, and it's A Murder for the Books by Victoria Gilbert. Um, I've heard that this one is, I think this one might has, have a tiny bit of romance in it as well, which I think is going to be really great. I would love to find the perfect book that is a mixture of cozy mystery and cozy romance as well. Okay, then I have Wine and Punishment by Sarah Fox. This is the first in the literary pub mystery. So this looks like it's a mixture of like food and drink and um, book. Lit it's a literary pub. So I wasn't sure which side to put this one on, but um, I have heard Tara from Buzzwords Books, I think, read this, and then Rainy um, recently started reading it as well, and I think this is going to be a fun one. The next one, The Secret Book and Scone Society by Ellery Adams. I think that this one is a mixture of food and books as well, and Ellery Adams is a pretty prolific cozy mystery writer, and I think that her stuff always gets pretty good reviews, so I'm looking forward to that. Guidebook to Murder, a tourist trap mystery. So this one um, is by Lynn Cahoon, and this one I think follows a book store owner. She owns Coffee Books and More, and I this is the only one that I'm a little bit scared about, and it's because I recently read a NetGalley arc by Lynn Cahoon in a different series of hers, and I didn't enjoy it that much. So I'm hoping that this series is more up my alley than the other one that I tried out of hers. Okay, Books Can Be Deceiving by Jen McKinley. This one is the first in a library lover's mystery. So this one is is going to focus on a library. Like Murder in the Mystery Suite by Ellery Adams again. So this one is a book retreat mystery series. This one is the first in a book town mystery series and it is Murder's Binding by Lorna Barnett. Okay, Lending a Paw by Laura Cass. This is the first in the Bookmobile Cat Mystery series which sort of sounds like kind of a weird mix-up but I guess we'll find out. I only bought the first of any of these so I don't like them. I mean a lot of them I bought secondhand at thrift books or on eBay so I it won't be that big a deal to donate them if I don't like them but okay then I have a dark and stormy murder by Julia Buckley. This is a winter's apprentice mystery the first one and this one sounds so interesting. It's about a woman who gets an apprenticeship um, with her favorite author and she has to go and live with her in this like creepy old house like a gothic style house and someone turns up dead on the property and it just sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Then I have Buried in a Book by Lucy Arlington. This is the first in a novel idea mystery series. Crime and Poetry by Amanda Flowers. This one is a magical bookshop mystery so a mixture of magic and books and this series always has like really cool titles i've seen i think the third one maybe just came out and i can't remember what it's like prose and cons prose and poetry maybe no this is crime and poetry i think it's prose and cons as in p-r-o-s-e and cons i think that's pretty clever the next one is one that I have been wanting to read for a really long time because I have read like three other Charlene Harris's book series and this is I think might be her first series she wrote or second it's one of her older ones but it is Real Murders and it's the first in the Aurora Tea Garden mystery series and this one has also been turned into a show I think on Hallmark Mystery Channel so I'm really looking forward to finally reading these. I don't think that they're going to be like spectacular change my life reads but I'm hoping that it's a good series. Then I have Double Books for Death. This is a black cat bookshop mystery by Allie Brandon and this is another one that's about a woman who I think she inherits like her grandmother or her aunt I'm not sure bookshop and she comes back to town to take that over. And then another one by Ellery Adams is A Killer Plot, and this is the first in the Books by the Bay mystery series, and this one follows an author, and I think she's moved back home, and she's talked into like joining a book club in town. Then I have a few more to share that didn't really go into any specific category. The first one is I bought this trilogy, which I know I shouldn't do. Broke another one of my rules. 
rules are meant to be broken, right? So this is the Scarlet Cove Seaside Mystery Trilo Trilogy by Agatha Frost and Evelyn Amber, and they're Dead in the Water, Castle on the Hill, and Stroke of Death, and um, these just follow a woman, I think are like her little town in Scarlet Cove, and they didn't really seem to fit in any of my categories. Then this one, um, the author actually recommended this to me um, through Instagram. I had one of her other series on there and she said, I think that you would also really like um, this Lola Cruz mystery series, which I had never even heard of before until she recommended it. And the first one is Living the Vida Lola by Melissa Bourbon. And it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun, like a mixture of like, it says right here, a spicy blend of crime solving and romance. So I'm hoping that I really love this one. Um, I think this was only like five books in this series. So that would be a great one to get hooked on. And this one was also recommended to me through Instagram. Um, this one, I think it was Stephanie from Miss Richards Reads and somebody else. I can't remember who the other person was. Uh, I'm sorry. If it was you who recommended this to me, let me know in the comments. But um, this is Scene of the Climb, and it's the first in the Pacific Northwest Mystery Series, also by Kate Dyer Seeley. Um, someone said that, so she also wrote um, Natural Thorn Killer, which I was really looking forward to, but someone said that they liked this one even better. Um, well, Stephanie did. And so... I had never even heard of this until she brought it up. So I really like reading books that have to do with hiking, even though I'm not a huge hiker, <laughs> but I enjoy reading about it. And I enjoy like hiking small trails, but I don't think I could ever hike the Pacific Crest Trail. My husband wants to do that. But anyway, I think this will be a fun book to read about, to read about hiking. I'm not sure what the overarching theme of the Lucy Stone mystery series, but the first one is Mistletoe Murder by Leslie Meyer. And I think that this first one may, it may just be that it just focuses on the specific character. I sort of thought it was about baking, but I don't think it is. I don't know for sure. If you know about this one, this is a pretty long running series that I think is pretty popular, but I don't know a ton about it. The last one uh, focuses on like a secondhand store um, and it is The Whole Cat and Caboodle by Sophie Ryan and the series is called A Second Chance Cat Mystery. So it's about a woman who owns this secondhand store and I guess she's going to have a sidekick, a little cat, which I think is a pretty common theme in cozy mysteries. So yeah, that's the very last one. If you hung here till the end, please let me know if you have read any of these or if there are any of these that are on your TBR that you were looking forward to or if you have any other cozy mysteries that are your favorites that you want to recommend to me that you think I should check out. Definitely let me know that down in the comments below. I am new to cozy mysteries. I have read some things that I think are classified as cozy mysteries, but I certainly am not a expert by any means. Um, I've just sort of dipped my toes into the genre, but I am looking forward to binge reading some of these series and sort of just blissing out on the cozy comfort of these types of books. I hope that you are all staying healthy and doing well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.